Hi everybody, welcome to Right to the Top, I'm Adam. In today's video, I'm gonna walk you through a complete essay. Actually, I'm gonna show you three essays by the time we're done. I'm gonna look at both IELTS and TOEFL essay writing, and I'm gonna look today at the descriptive essay. I've had a few requests on these on YouTube, and so I decided it's time to walk you through a descriptive essay. Now, the reason I haven't done this before is because this is the least common type of essay you're gonna see on these exams. And the reason is that they're a little bit easier than the other types of essays. An, an opinion essay, a discussion, a comparison, a two-part question, these require a little bit more strength in writing, whereas a descriptive essay is very straightforward. Here's description number one, number two, number three, conclusion, and you're done. There's no opinion, there's no argument, there's no convincing. There's only painting a picture. Now, I'm not saying it's easy, but it's easier than the other types of essays, which is why it's a little bit, uh, you'll see it a little bit less frequently on these exams. So I'm gonna show you two approaches to this type of question. You have your TOEFL approach and you have your IELTS approach. Now, let's look at the actual question first. A productive staff is one that responds well to an effective manager. Companies should therefore try to hire the best managers. Makes sense. What are the qualities of an effective manager? So, TOEFL is more likely to give you a very straightforward description question. Just here, describe a good manager to me. That's all they want you to do. Quite often, they won't even include all this stuff. They'll just take out all the prompt and they'll just leave you only with the question. There's a question, very simple, very little to read start working. Not very common on the IELTS. The IELTS will generally give you the prompt, they'll give you the little bit extra to read. Keep in mind, this first part, not really important, it doesn't help you. But they'll, they'll do it just to get the idea starting to flow in your mind. But they'll give you the prompt and then they'll give you the same question, what are the qualities of an effective manager? But they will add a second question that will require a different style of writing. Should a company promote managers from among its staff or recruit a new employee? Okay, so again, TOEFL, more likely to give you a very straightforward question. IELTS, they'll combine it with an argument or opinion or comparison, which is a little bit harder, obviously, but it's also harder because you have less room. Here you're writing like 370 to 400 words. Here you're writing 300 to 330. Ideally, you don't have to, I'll show you that as well. So this is a little bit more difficult. So the approach to both types of uh, questions is very different. So we're gonna start with the TOEFL. Oh, sorry, before we start with anything, we're gonna look at the, our planning. Make sure you plan your essays, always plan. So you, first thing you wanna do is think about some good qualities. Now remember, this is not an opinion, uh, it's not an opinion essay, which means you don't have to argue for anything. You just need to support some ideas that you present. Qualities, I've, I've written down three. I could write 10, but I don't need to. For the TOEFL, three is enough. For the IELTS, one or two is enough because you have another part to the question. So I put good communicator, he's driven or she, and sympathetic, okay? I may use all three, I may not. Good communicator, because you need to set goals, manage conflict, customer satisfaction, driven, he got the promotion in the first place to manager, and uh, he knows, he got the upgrade, he knows how to uh, motivate others perhaps. Sympathetic, understands that people have lives outside of work, and that somehow affects their work, and can retain, keep good staff. Very quick ideas. There's no such thing as right or wrong in a description essay. There's what, Whatever features you want to give, whatever descriptors you want to give, what's important is how you illustrate them, how you support them, how you elaborate on them. Now, for the IELTS, I'm also going to need to make a quick little idea. Do I hire an insider, somebody from within the company, or an outsider, somebody new? I have some pros for either one. I have some cons for either one. Again, I've written here quite a few ideas. I won't do this on the actual test day. I'm not gonna to spend too much time thinking of three different things. I'll think of one or two, one or two pros, one or two cons, and start writing. 
at most, I will think about five minutes to plan, maybe four minutes for the TOEFL because it's a little bit more straightforward, three, four minutes for the TOEFL. So here are some ideas. I'm going to use some of them. I'm obviously not going to use all of them. By the way, stale means the opposite of fresh. Learning curve is very important. I'm actually going to use this in my essay. When you start a new position or you start doing anything new, at the beginning, you will do everything slowly. The more experience you get, the more time passes, you do it faster and better. So that's called your, your learning curve. Like Basically, it should work like, like this. You're starting slow, and then your performance gets higher and better and faster as you get going, and then eventually you just plateau. You, there's only so high you can go. So very good expression. I'm going to use that in my essay. And then other things, their ego I didn't mention, loyalty I did mention, wants to impress a little bit, yeah. He already he or she knows the staff, helps the learning curve, etc. So some ideas thrown in there. Now, I'm going to start with the introduction. Notice that they're about the same length, 54 words, 55 words, almost the same. The beginning, essentially the same thing. The thesis statement is obviously going to be very different for the two uh, essays. Here, I'm only doing one thing with this essay. Here, I'm doing two things with this essay. So I need to be very clear with my thesis as to what this essay proposes to do. So the key to a successful company uh, business is its personnel. I'm talking about the staff. I already bring up the idea. Staff and its leadership in particular. Leadership, management. So we know we're talking about work, we're talking about staff, we're talking about management. As such, it is vital for companies to employ the best managers who can get the most out of their staff. So we're talking about the best managers. I, I bring this idea to the top. I go from very general to a little bit more specific. Get the most out of, this is a very good collocation, means make, get the most productivity, make them very efficient. So now, my thesis statement. I'm only doing a description, nothing else. No opinion, no arguments, nothing. And there's no you in the question, there's no I, me, or my in the thesis statement. While business knowledge is also essential, a top tier leader, means a very high quality, the best leader, must possess certain soft skills. So I, I put it in a very general context, soft skills, because all the three points that I put in my plan are essentially soft skills. They're not hard skills, not technical skills. That's why I'm focusing on the manager has to have good soft skills, as this essay will demonstrate. This is what I'm going to do. The beginning of the IELTS, more or less the same. The only thing I changed was maximize their staff's output. Same idea as get the most out of their staff. I just wanted to show you some variety, different vocabulary. Now, the thesis. While a top tier leader must possess certain soft skills, I'm putting this first. This is going to be my first body paragraph. I'm going to talk about the soft skills. Business knowledge and product familiarity. So I added a little bit here because this is going to be part of my argument for hiring somebody from within. So making promotion from within the best option. I've clearly taken a side. Insider, outsider, I choose insider. I'm going to talk to you about soft skills. I'm going to talk to you about why you should hire from within very clearly in my thesis uh, statement. Then I get into the body. But again, remember, I mentioned soft skills first, body paragraph one. I mentioned which choice I made, body uh, second, body paragraph two. Here, I'm just going to go one, first idea, two, second idea, three, third idea. OK, I'm going to talk to you about that, the two or three body paragraphs in a second. So here is my body paragraph for the TOEFL. Now, it's small, it's tight, I don't expect you to read it. If you want to read these essays, there's a link in the description box that you can go to my website and read the essays carefully, uh, slowly, at your leisure. Take your time with it. A few things I just wanted to point out here. One, first thing to notice, 123 words in the first body, 99 words in the second, and 71 words in the third. I'm getting shorter with each body paragraph. This should be a standard feature of all your essays. You could have balance, like balanced number of words in body one and two, but generally speaking, one, 
should be longest, third should be shortest. Be very careful with the third body paragraph if you're using one. Make sure that it's not too short. I've seen people write a one sentence third body paragraph. That's not a paragraph. It's not developed enough, that's for sure. Make sure it doesn't have to be too long, but it has to be complete. It has to be developed nevertheless. Okay? Uh, I will mention that you can go short, longer, longest. You can reverse the order. That's a, that's a different style of writing. But I really, really don't recommend this for the IELTS or TOEFL or any timed situation. If you have a week to submit your essay, yeah, that's a very nice way to do it. Very powerful ending, very effective emphasis on your main idea, that's fine. On these tests, you have 30 minutes, you have 40 minutes, make sure your main ideas are done quickly and effectively so that if you run out of time at the end and you're rushing, you don't lose too many points for that. Now, another thing to notice. All I'm doing here, this is the TOEFL, and because it's the TOEFL, I'm using three paragraphs because here's an idea, here's why, here's an idea, here's why, here's an idea, here's why. I don't need to develop things too much. I don't need to give examples for everything. So here I can afford to give you three different descriptors of a good manager and develop each one as much as necessary. So I, I go with a first, another, and lastly. I'm basically just listing them. A first, another attribute, lastly. Three different ideas, one, two, three, very straightforward, which is, again, why they don't give you this type of essay very often. It's, it's a little bit too easy in their minds. Again, like I said before, it's not easy because you still have to make sure to give a very complete picture of your ideas. So I'm starting with excellent communication skills. Very broad topic sentence. I'm going to talk about communication. Communication, speaking, and listening. And I say, I expand on that. These include the ability to clearly express something, though more important are listening skills. So communication, elaborate, expression, listening, both things. Now, this is because this means listening skills. Why are listening skills? I'm going to explain to you why I think that listening skills are more important. And then I tell you what can happen if you're not a good listener. And then I give you an example how listening is very uh, important for a manager. And then I give you a closing. This will not only save the company time and cost, it will also ensure repeat sales. So this is the overall justification for communication skills. Then, another crucial attribute, and, and I'm going to give you the second important quality of a manager, of effective managers, it's related to listening, which is why I put it second, is the ability to sympathize with staff. What does this mean? In other words, they must remember that employees are human, they have home lives, sometimes they have problems at home, the problems come to the office, they're distracted, they're less motivated. The manager should know when to step back, leave the person alone, and when to step in to offer advice. Okay? Most employees greatly appreciate this and tend to refocus on their work more quickly. So how does this make the manager good? He gets them back to work right away, or as, as quickly as possible. And lastly, now I didn't say first, second, I said first, another. Again, I'm giving you a list, the last item on the list, lastly. Uh, the person was promoted, which means he's driven. If he's driven, this motivation can be, he can be a role model, role model to motivate others. So a good manager must motivate others to work hard. This way, they see that, uh, that's one thing, sorry, uh, role model to others. F strive for the company's success while simultaneously seeking their own promotion. Okay, raises or other incentives. So notice that here, my example, I'm just giving you some examples of how they can uh, motivate themselves. What do they see that motivates them? Notice here, I didn't really give any examples. I didn't say what kind of problems they have at home. It's irrelevant. It doesn't add anything and it doesn't detract if I don't add it. It's very self-explanatory. I don't need an example. Now, not only does the company benefit from higher productivity and staff retention, again, retention, keeping them, they don't quit and go to another company, but the individual benefits greatly. So everybody benefits because the manager motivated everybody to do it. 
three items, explained, illustrated, examples where necessary, closing sentences to show how this answers the question, what are the qualities of a good manager, okay? Now, obviously, the IELTS is gonna be very different. And notice I only have two body paragraphs for the IELTS. And again, you can read this on my website uh, at your leisure. The difference in length is not that much, 125 to 101, because again, they both need to be fully developed. Now, the reason I chose two is because I need to develop one idea. I need to develop one idea. By making two paragraphs, I have more words and more space to develop each idea fully. If I try to include a third paragraph, one of these is going to suffer, is going to not have enough, uh, enough information or enough ideas to convince a reader. So again, here, all I'm doing is saying, what, describing a good manager, and here I'm making an argument. Okay, that's the key difference. Now, because I only have one paragraph to describe this good manager, I'm not going to try to give the reader three different ideas of what is a good manager. I'm going to focus on one, and a little bit of a byproduct of that one. So, I'm talking about general soft skills, especially communication, communi communicative skills. A great communicator expresses and listens. Again, I'm saying the same ideas. He can react to all manner of problems, such as interpersonal, client dissatisfaction. Again, I'm going to give an example of how this uh, applies in real life with the same idea I used for the TOEFL. And then, uh, so now I talked about the customer dissatisfaction. Now I'm going to talk about express company's goals. I'm going back a little bit to the speaking part by creating harmonious and efficient workplace because he knows how to deal with conflict. He knows how to make everybody work they're supposed, the way they're supposed to, improve staff uh, retention and productivity, and everybody strives and shares similar goals. So a good manager keeps a good harmony in the office and gets productivity out of his staff. Good. With the above in mind, and don't forget your transitions. A lot of people don't put transitions between paragraphs. The grader, the examiners, are looking for this very specifically. Make sure you give them a transition. So with the above in mind, so with these ideas, I'm going to connect these qualities to the reason that I think an insider is the better choice as the manager than an outsider. Okay? Uh, so topic sentence, uh, promoting a manager from within their company's ranks has benefits. So it's better to do it. Now, some of you are thinking, well, do I need to make a comparison between insider and outsider? In one paragraph, you really don't have much room to do that. All you need to really do is just mention the outsider, which I did. Okay, so meaning, so I'm gonna go over here after I explain a few things. Meaning, he would have a significantly shorter learning curve because he knows the products, he knows the other staff, he knows how this company works, their policies, their goals, etc. He has a shorter learning curve than an outsider. I mentioned the outsider, I showed why the insider is better, enough. Get back to the insider and complete your sale of him or whatever, your persuasion of why the insider is better, right? So, and then again, a few more ideas, loyalty, rewarded with loyalty, in other words, I explain what this means, etc. This manager was, hired, was promoted from within, other employees recognize that the company will reward hard workers, so they try to work harder. There is a way to go up. They don't need to leave the company to advance. And this makes everybody work harder. Two paragraphs, description, argument, and that's it. TOEFL, description one, description two, description three. And that's really all there is to it. Conclusion, more or less the same thing. You're just summarizing and repeating the thesis. So a good manager knows how to communicate with staff, especially by listening. This aids in being sympathetic and inspire his staff. So I mentioned all three uh, features that I mentioned in the body paragraph. So to conclude, communication is a very important positive work environment because of communication. And the manager who knows the company very well and its product can do this more easily than a stranger. So I'm again saying that the insider is uh, the better choice. Okay, so now, 
just so very quickly, again, don't try to read it here, but if you want, press pause and read it. Go to my website, read it there. So this essay, the TOEFL, 390 words. That's a good length for TOEFL. IELTS. So here, this, uh, uh, the first one I showed you, the one we, I spoke about, is 320 words. But a lot of people have a hard time getting to 300 even, to 300 words. I always recommend for the IELTS, if you want to get a higher score, between 300 and 330 words is ideal. But can you still get a high score with much fewer words? Yes. Here is basically the same IELTS essay. I shrunk it to 263 words. So I'm just over the limit, but I still managed to get all the ideas. The key to getting a high score with a shorter essay is very tight sentences, very good use of vocab and grammar so that you don't need the extra words to say something. This will also get you a high score, just like the 320, but again, you have to have very good writing skills to be able to do that, in the, to use fewer words to say more things, okay? But if you want to compare the two, again, all three of these essays are on my website. You can go there now, writetotop.com. You can see them there. There's a link in the description box. And that's all there is to a descriptive. Basically, very straightforward. Don't include yourself. Don't give an opinion. Describe, create a mental picture for the reader. And that's it, which is also why you're not going to see too many of these on the exams. So that's it. If you like this video, please give me a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And yes, you can ask me questions in the YouTube comment section. And uh, come back next week. I'll give you some more grammar, vocab, writing tips, and other things that hopefully will help you. See you then. Bye-bye.